The BBCB had the big advantage of having a thing called a user port, which previous personal computers didn't have, not to my knowledge. The user port would take an analogue signal and inside the BBC would be an, an A to D converter which would digitise it and then the BBC could process whatever information had come in. And we recognised this and we said, well this can actually do a lot of the things that we are making in the, in the section. We're building pieces of bespoke equipment for people to do what the BBC can now do. And these BBCs are here, we understand how they work and so we're going to start using them because it will be easier. All we'll have to do is to build the interface bit which is the sensor which detects whatever biological piece of information it is. It might be a temperature, it might be a colour, whatever it is. We can convert that into a voltage and we can feed that into the BBC and then we can write some software to do whatever it is that the, the research requires. So we learnt quite a lot about the BBC in that respect. So from that point of view, the BBC and then later when the IBMs came in, the first one was the IBM, it wasn't the AT, I've forgotten what it was called now. But anyway, when the IBMs came in, <coughs> they, they took over from the BBC, they were much more powerful, uh, I think they had more bits and uh, we used them quite a bit. But going back to the, the, the advent of personal computers in the Institute, this is a slightly separate story still because what was happening was that the computing department was still not particularly interested in personal computers. They didn't think, as I've mentioned before, that they were the sort of things that could do what they wanted. And as far as the secretarial staff were concerned, they didn't. They were using them as word processors. But gradually, some of the scientists, because that's what they're like, wanted to start investigating, writing their own bits of software, that's the sort of thing they like to do. And of course at the same time we were using them to do instrumentation and data acquisition and the stuff that we'd always been doing with discrete components, we started to use micro computer, personal computers. I could see that there was a need in the Institute for support for people with personal computers and it was something that the computing department didn't want to know about. So I set up a thing called PC support and the person I used to do that was someone called Eleanor King. Eleanor had got a, a degree in, I don't know quite what it was in, it was some sort of engineering degree. She'd been brought in by Dennis Rothwell to do um, work on a collaborative project with the Collaborative Centre which was next door to Mill Hill on sensors and that had run its course and Eleanor hadn't got much to do and I said to her, look, can you do this? And I said an awful lot of these people now want courses in, in word processing They've got these word processors, they're very complicated, they want to... So we ran courses in the Fletcher Hall on Word, which Eleanor rang, ran, and she also went round holding hands, plugging in printers, all the things that go wrong, and they still do with people's personal computers, she would do. She got into the software, she knew how to boot them, all these things, excellent. And that got so big, we eventually had three people just doing PC support. And that went on for... Um, until the 1990s, I guess, by which time the, the mainframe computers were starting to use IBM PCs as the mainframe computer. They, they were so powerful by then that two or three personal computers could do more than the old mainframes could do. I don't know much about the mainframe computer, but I know that they, they were using PCs, and it seemed a logical time to say, well, this really ought to now be part of the computing department, and so the whole of my PC support section moved to computing under Brian Fails, who was there at the time. And I was all in favour of that. I thought it was a good thing. But of course, it did mean that the electronics section reduced in the number of staff. And I, at that time, I think I had to, three people in PC support and four people doing um, electronics, pure electronics. And then I had John Sorkins, who was doing the servicing and what have you. So that was four, it's about eight people in electronics and that went down from eight, went down by three. And at the time of course the requirement for um, bespoke electronic solutions to problems were becoming less and less because there's more and more items being supplied by industry. You know we, we actually built the very first AT data acquisition board in electronics and, and they Eventually they became available commercially, they became better than the ones we'd made. Ours was the best when it was built, it was the first one, and I could talk about that to, in some detail, but I won't at this stage. Um, but the result of all this was that the number of people required to do the electronics started to reduce, and it meant the whole department started to reduce in numbers.